Hey, everybody, it's Diane Wingert, host of the Driven Woman Entrepreneur Podcast. Today, we are going to be talking about marketing. Now, I know that you are probably inundated with all the tips and tricks and tactics and hacks and guaranteed systems for getting you in front of your ideal audience and creating leads and clients. But in reality, especially for the kind of clients that I work with, you actually need a strategy, not tactics. Marketing is something that many of my clients really resist. And it makes sense because the people that I am best suited to working with are what I call recovering academics and corporate refugees. What does that mean? Well, basically this, people who were very successful in their previous careers and were probably the superstars in the organizations that they worked for, but really didn't have an opportunity to demonstrate and benefit from their unique perspective and their original thinking. So what did they do? They left and they decided to go out on their own and create their own coaching or consulting company. Now, in the corporate world and also, and maybe especially in the world of academia, it's a different game. There are different rules. And while you do need to, in a way, promote yourself, you do need to make sure that the powers that be know who you are and what your contributions can be. Otherwise, you're going to languish amongst the rank and file. You're not going to be promoted. Your thoughts won't be thought out. Your contributions will not be maximized, optimized, leveraged, and you're going to get frustrated, resentful, and probably depressed over years. I have seen it with countless of my former colleagues. It really doesn't pay to be a superstar in academia or the corporate world. Hey, Rhonda, thanks for joining. So here's the deal. If you are bold, bright, brilliant, and badass enough to bet on you and step out from academia or the corporate world, I've also worked with plenty of people who came out of nonprofits, and they are especially reluctant and resistant to market themselves. My husband came out of academia, I came out of nonprofits, and I've also done stints in the corporate and academic worlds. And I will tell you that we used to have this joke between us where people who did highlight their gifts, their talents, their attributes, their accomplishments, and what they had to offer the organization, we used to refer to them as shamelessly self-promoting. Then the coaching industry burst on the scene a number of years ago, and all kinds of people who were shamelessly self-promoting started moving to the front of the pack, well past and much faster than the legitimate experts who simply didn't know how to promote themselves in this new world of the internet. Well, there are a ton of people handing out advice about marketing. There are a ton of people telling you that they found the way, almost like religion, right? There's one way, and if you go the other way, you're not going to go the right way. But it's simply not true. I have been working with a marketing and messaging consultant for about a year. We have become close friends, and I definitely consider her a trusted advisor. I did an entire episode about this on the Driven Woman Entrepreneur podcast this week. It's out now if you want to listen to it, where Claudia and I talk about what she and I both believe is absolutely necessary for your marketing strategy. Now, I'm going to not cover the same material that was in the episode because you can go listen to that. What I want to talk about today is how I have learned to make changes in my own business as a result of what I've learned from Claudia <clears throat> and how I have changed the way I coach my own business strategy 
and coaching clients as a result of what I've learned. Because I did the same thing that just about everybody does. I came out of this former career that I was very successful in, but I didn't want to do it anymore. I no longer wanted to toil making money that only someone else benefited from. I knew I was undervalued. I knew I was underutilized. And I knew that my creativity was never going to be fully expressed as long as I needed to conform to a job description and the way that particular organization wanted to utilize me. It's nobody's fault that this happens to just about all creative people because organizations are really not set up. Whether you're talking about, when I say organizations, I'm going big picture here. I'm talking about governments. I'm talking about the educational system as well as corporate academic and nonprofit organizations. They are really not set up, designed, or appropriate for the people who are there to be fully leveraged and optimized for their gifts. It would probably be total chaos. Now, I do think there are organizations that do a better job of bringing out the best in their employees, contractors, colleagues, members, whatever they may be called. I do think there is a way to do that. And I do think creative organizations, organizations that are set up to tap into creativity are better at that. But the bottom line is you decided to bet on you. You decided to fly solo. You decided to name it and claim it and to plant your flag and become your own personal brand. These are the terms that my clients use. They will either call themselves a personal brand. They will call themselves a freelancer. They'll call themselves a solopreneur. They will call themselves a coach, a consultant, a strategist. And sometimes we look like my friend Rhonda, who is on this call. uh, We're always looking for more accurate ways to describe our special magic, what I call our secret sauce. And I think that is really fundamentally at the bottom of the very best marketing. I also believe that it's really hard to get at it and to optimize it when you are trying to do it totally on your own. Now, this is not a sales pitch. Let me be really clear. This is free information, but it is my perspective based on lots of experience. A lot of us start off with, we're not funded, okay? We we do not have angel investors. We do not have funding streams. We don't have any investors at all. Oftentimes, we're either starting with absolutely nothing, or maybe we have some savings. Maybe we were able to start our business while we were ending our previous career, what we call a side hustle. Maybe we had to liquidate an asset to start our business, or maybe we were lucky enough to have family and or friends who supported us at the beginning of our journey. But at some point, we have to fund ourselves. And if you are entirely self-funded from the beginning, chances are you are relying on free advice to find your way. Now, I got nothing against free. (laughs) Free is awesome. And free advice has frankly helped hundreds of thousands of people start a business who simply would not have been able to start that business had they been paying for all that advice. So I think it's awesome. I also think it's awesome that there are a ton of people who are able to start their business by bartering their services with others. Let's say you are a graphic designer but you are not a website developer. You have a friend who is. You can help each other out. You can either help each other out by providing services for each other on a barter basis or providing referrals to one another or both. I see this a lot with the younger creatives that I work with. But at some point, I think limiting yourself to free advice and or bartering will hold you back. Why? 
Oh, and here's the next thing we tend to do before I say something about that. Free advice is usually how we get started. Bartering is often how we are able to get a little traction to get that website, that basic logo, that first offer, maybe figure out a little bit about marketing. Let me have some water. <clears throat> but <clears throat> then it's the courses. Then it is after you get all the free advice. And by free advice, I mean podcasts. I mean blogs. I mean YouTube channels. I mean the, the hundreds of thousands of freebies and opt-ins and lead magnets and downloads. After we've consumed all of that, and none of it is bad or wrong, I really think everybody kind of needs to do at least a little bit of that in the beginning to kind of see what's available to people for free. But it is a mass market approach. Mass market, cookie cutter, one size fits all. And that is never, ever, in my opinion, going to optimize your brilliance, your unique perspective, mindset, gifts, and how you present and offer them for sale. Why? Well, I've, I've shared this anecdote before. When I was in graduate school to become a licensed clinical social worker, to become a psychotherapist, my previous career, I went a little bit later than most of my peers. Most of my peers were in their early to mid 20s. I was in my mid 30s, married with three school age kids when I went to grad school. And I remember how frustrated my fellow students became when every question they asked of our clinical professor, the professor who was tasked with helping us develop the skill set and the mindset to become psychotherapists, to help people with mental health concerns. Every one of them would ask questions. What do I do when this happens? How do I handle it when that happens? And every single time, Dr. Maki said, well, it depends. Well, now here I am many years later, and whenever one of my clients or someone that's on my email list follows me on social media or listens to my podcast and reaches out to connect with me, which by the way, any of you can do, they always say, what do I do about this? What's the best way to do that? Should I try this? And I will always start my feedback with, it depends. Because I think the free advice, the bartering of services, the low-cost courses, and the huge group coaching programs that promise people to tell them exactly what they need to know to have a thriving business are leaving people high and dry by the millions. Why? Because if you have something to share, if you have something to offer, if people actually have a reason to find you, hire you, and work with you, it is because of your awesome sauce, your specialness, your distinctive difference, your unfair advantage. And that can't ever be evoked or elicited from a one-size-fits-all approach. You are unique. You are different. You are distinctive. And the way you look at things that separates you from others who do exactly what you do is your magic. Now, how do we get at that? And how do we leverage it in your marketing and in selling your services? Well, I'm going to reference my friend Rhonda again. Everything she does is branded. Everything. She has very strong, very distinctive color branding for her business, which is a marketing strategy business. So she needs to stand out so she can help her clients stand out. Those colors appear in every single thing she does including her wardrobe and the way she paints her nails. 
So standing out requires strategy. I mean, hey, we can all stand out once in a while because we happen to say something clever or because we happen to hop on a trend or because somebody with a bigger audience gave us access. But that is going to be a one and done kind of deal. That is a transaction. You are never going to be able to build a thriving, sustainable business on a one hit wonder. Does anybody remember Miley Cyrus's dad? I don't even remember his name. We sure remember her. Why do we remember Miley Cyrus and not her dad? Well, first of all, he had one song that was a hit. That's not a strategy. She has a brand. You know exactly what to expect from Miley Cyrus. She is not afraid to stand out. She has haters, to be sure. There are a lot of people who think she is untalented and absolutely trashy, but she also has very devoted followers. That's what we actually want. And for those of us who come from corporate, nonprofit, or academic careers, this requires a deconstruction of your former identity. This is a lot of the work that I do. We may be so ready to stop doing what we were doing in our former career, or maybe we just want to keep on doing it, but for our own benefit and not theirs. You still have to deconstruct your identity, your mindset, and the way you go about doing things. Because once you're on your own, you're not going to like this. Once you are on your own, if you have chosen to be self-employed, you are in the business of marketing and sales. There, I said it. And a lot of former academics and former corporate superstars and former nonprofit heroes hate how necessary, important, and absolutely vital marketing and sales really is. You simply have to stand out or hire someone to help you do so, period. Otherwise, you're going to get lost. And then you're going to really want to kick your own butt for thinking that you could make it on your own. And that would be such a sad outcome. <clears throat> you do not have to be shamelessly self-promoting. You have to know what's special about you. You have to believe that what makes you special will help you stand out. You have to find the platforms, the channels, and the opportunities that allow you to leverage your very best gifts. And you have to do it in such a way that you create consistency so you can sustain that effort over time. Now, one more sip of water, and I'm going to tell you how I have incorporated these things into my business. <clears throat> Man, ever since I had COVID in August, I have never been able to get rid of this. <clears throat> Super annoying, and I apologize. <clears throat> okay. I knew that I was good at speaking. I'm also an excellent writer but I am a natural speaker. It's always amused me that most people say that public speaking is the most terrifying thing for the vast majority of humans. I really enjoy it. I find it easy, natural, comfortable. The only thing I worry about when I'm doing any public speaking is that there will be a problem with the tech and I won't know what to do. That's it. So it didn't really make sense for me to start a blog. It made sense for me to start a podcast. Why? Because a podcast allows me to tap into and leverage a natural gift. Not everybody is a gifted speaker. In fact, most people aren't. Most really smart, really competent experts and thought leaders are not natural speakers. Now, if they are convinced that they need to speak to develop their personal brand, then they can hire a speaking coach. They can. You can hire media coaches. You can hire, you can hire coaches for anything nowadays. But would it make more sense? Would it be more sustainable? And would it help them get in front of the right people for them if they did something different? 
is it easier for you to write than it is for you to speak? Then get a blog and maybe work on a book. If, is it, if, you, if you are a natural in front of the camera, you're not camera shy, you're not self-conscious. In fact, you kind of go into performance mode. Get a YouTube channel, get on TikTok, do short form video, long form video. Why? Because people that love being on video, and I have a number of clients who do, that shows them at their best. That shows them in their zone of genius, exercising their natural gifts. That is what makes marketing sustainable. Why? Because you're not going against your own grain. You are not forcing yourself to do something that is going to feel really effortful. Because when you do that, because some coach, some guru, your friend, you saw it work for other people, so you decide, okay, that's the way. And frankly, this really pisses me off because so many other business strategists and coaches will tell you, this is what you need to do, and this is how you need to do it. And if that doesn't align with you, with your natural gifts, with your lifestyle, with your energetic bandwidth, you're going to fail and they will blame you. (laughs) This is also why I don't like people who say this is the way, and that's the majority of them. It's much more difficult to find someone who will help you figure out what is your zone of genius? How do you show up best naturally? And then help you craft a strategy where you can do that over time. It's so logical that I honestly can't understand why anyone teaches anything else. Oh yeah, yes I can. It's because it's the only thing they've learned. See, if you go through these big, huge programs and you're taught by some guru, some shamelessly self-promoting guru, this is the way to do it. And then you learn that way and it's the only way you learn. And you actually try to build a business on that and it doesn't work, but you've invested a lot of time and money in learning that one way and you literally don't know another you know what you're going to do? You're going to rebrand yourself a business coach and you are going to propagate that bullshit to others. It's like a multi-level marketing pyramid scheme. What I encourage people to do, especially people who are the highly educated experts who have a body of work, a unique perspective, and they want to build a profitable, sought-after business based on their brilliance, I really think you should hire someone who is able to help you craft an individualized strategy, and that's probably going to need to be one-on-one. That's what I believe, and that's what I've experienced after buying the courses, being a part of the big programs, trying to cram myself into the one-size-fits-all approach, failing repeatedly because it wasn't me. It didn't leverage my gifts. It didn't allow me to build on my strengths. So of course, it ate up all my energetic bandwidth and it wasn't sustainable. And I am one of hundreds of thousands who have experienced this. I think it's one of the dirty, I wouldn't say little secrets anymore. It's one of the dirty secrets of the coaching industry and particularly business coaching. Is it any wonder that people have trust issues when they come across people like myself or my friend Rhonda? Because we've all been burned. So once I realized okay, I don't need to conform to the norm. I don't need to package myself up the way everyone else does. I don't need to follow the 15 email, you know, sequence. I don't need to leverage other people's audiences. I don't need to do the tactics, the proven systems. What I need to do is what's right for me. So 
my approach, and by the way, this is the approach that I now use with my one-on-one business strategy and coaching clients is I assessed, what am I really good at? What do I do naturally? What is actually in my zone of genius? What are the things I really suck at and I can do, but I should really make it a goal to outsource or hire someone to do them for me as quickly as possible so that I can spend more time in my zone of genius? What are my values? What is my energetic capacity? What are my competing obligations and priorities? What's my runway? Like how much time can I give myself or do I have the luxury of having before I need to turn a profit? How many hours do I want to work a day? How many days do I want to work a week, a month? How do I want to show up for people? All of those things help you craft a business that's not only perfectly suited to you, but allows you to sustain your effort over time. It's what I call right-sized. Not everybody wants to jump on the seven-figure entrepreneur bandwagon. Not everybody wants to have a team do everything so that they can just show up and shine. Not everybody wants it. Not everybody needs it. And it's a very privileged position to even think you could have it. So what's right for you? When it comes to marketing, you got to wrap your mind around the fact that it's absolutely necessary. Unless you are able to pay someone to do your marketing for you, But as a coach, consultant, expert, thought leader, that's going to be really hard because people are going to want to hire you for you. So if someone else is doing your marketing and selling and you're not a part of it at all, it's going to be really hard for them to know who you are and feel enough of a connection to want to work with you one-on-one. I always assumed that people would prefer one-on-one if they can afford it, but that's actually not true. For the same reason why a lot of people avoid, resist, and at least procrastinate on their marketing. Visibility. You can't hide when you're working with someone one-on-one. They are literally up in your biz shiz, or at least I am, the way I work. I get all up in your shiz. Why? Because I actually want you to succeed. If I'm partnering partnering with you, I get excitement, satisfaction, and fulfillment from helping you succeed. So if you're not taking action because you have become accustomed to lurking in these great big programs, we're not a good fit. If you finally come to the realization that the reason you're not getting what you came for in these group programs is because you're not getting that. It depends, not one to many, one size fits all, but perfectly suited to you feedback, then you're not ready for one-to-one. Because at the end of the day, you are a personal brand. You are an expert, a thought leader, a solopreneur. You have to know exactly who you are, what your gifts are, and what they're not how you show up naturally, what venue is best for you. Maybe it's not a podcast, a blog, or a YouTube channel. Maybe what lights you up like a Christmas tree is live events. In that case, we should be crafting a speaking career for you. And content creation is probably going to be a very small part of that. So to make marketing successful and to make marketing strategic, you got to figure out the way that's right for you so you don't hate it. Even if you never love it, you will become a believer in its value. Customized to you with the right amount of support you need. Maybe the support you need is a business strategist and coach like myself or someone like me. 
Maybe you also need an assistant that can research those speaking opportunities, send your pitch requests, follow up with scheduling, make your airline and hotel reservations. Maybe that's your business model. Really simple. You're not jumping up and down on TikTok because it's just not suited to your unique business. So knowing who you are and what your gifts are, getting the right kind of support. Maybe you want that big team. I'm not here to judge. Maybe you want a great big team. Maybe you want to be like the heart surgeon. Somebody else book brings that patient to the hospital. Someone else gets them checked in. Someone else goes through the drill with them. Someone else gives them their gown. Somebody else puts them to sleep. Somebody else shaves them. Somebody else preps them. Somebody else opens them up. And if you're the heart surgeon, you come in with your gloves, do your patented procedure, and book it on out of there while other people do the cleanup and restoring to consciousness. You can have that. Or you can have the business where you do everything for yourself. Either way, being crystal clear on the business model, the ideal strategy to reach your people, not to be popular, not to have a big audience, not to be able to brag about your followers or get the blue check mark on Instagram, but what is the right approach to get you in front of the right people for you and to be able to stand out in a way that they instantly know she's the one, he's the one, they're the one, so that they can find you, book you, hire you, and benefit from your unique magic. I think that's pretty uncomplicated. I really do. It's, it's really funny that people think they want tips and tricks and hacks and tactics, but strategy, they think strategy is just, oh, that's, that's, that's complex. That's, co- that's too big. That's too much. I don't want all that. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm be the first one to tell you strategy simplifies everything. You know why? Because when you have a strategy, you know what fits and you know what doesn't. You can set boundaries and if you need to, literally put blinders on so you are no longer distracted by all the things that are going to come your way or you're going to see or hear about that simply don't fit with your right-sized expert business. Life actually gets simpler when you have a strategy. And I honestly don't know how to get one when you're part of a huge group taking packaged advice. So I hope that landed well with some of you. I hope it was useful to all of you. And if you want to hear more information like this, be sure you are following the Driven Woman Entrepreneur Podcast. It is on all the popular platforms. And if we're not connected, on LinkedIn or Instagram at Coach Diane Wingard. Why the heck not? Why not? There's more juicy goodness where this came from on the regular because I found a way to market my business that taps into my natural gifts. And you can too. That's all for now. Thanks for being here live and thanks for joining me on the replay. See you next week.